Hello and welcome to this teach on acute closed angle glaucoma for the I See What You Did There series of lectures on the eye. So in this teach we'll obviously be looking at acute angle closure glaucoma. Um, we're looking at its presentation, its diagnosis and its management. And to do so we'll also look at the physiology of the aqueous pathway as well, the aqueous humour in the eye. So glaucoma in general is a progressive optic neuropathy where there are characteristic changes to your optic nerve head and there are typical patterns of visual field loss as well. Uh, worldwide it's the second leading cause of blindness and in the West it's found in 1% of over 40 year olds and 3% of over 70 year olds. It can be either open or closed angle depending on the anatomy of the anterior chamber which we'll look at in a moment but in this lecture we'll be focusing more on the acute closed angle glaucoma. Acute closed angle glaucoma is an ophthalmic emergency, uh, so left untreated uh, it can cause irreversible damage to the optic nerve and blindness as well. So obviously it's quite important to get it sorted as soon as you can. Um, it's caused by the blockage of the outflow of aqueous humour through the iridocorneal angle, so the angle between the iris and the cornea. And when that becomes blocked, the aqueous humour cannot flow out of the eye and it builds up. There's a drastic increase in intraocular pressure and this causes the damage to the optic nerve. So let's have a look at the uh, aqueous pathway and its normal flow. So this obviously is the eye, and the bit that we're concerned with is not the vitreous chamber at the back of the eye, it's the anterior and the posterior chamber in which the aqueous humour flows. Uh, so that's between the cornea and the posterior surface of the lens capsule. Uh, so if we look at the anterior and posterior chamber in more depth now. So this is a picture of the anterior and posterior chamber. So aqueous humour is the fluid that's found in these chambers of the eye, but is not found in the vitreous chamber, where you have the vitreous humour. Uh, aqueous humour is responsible for supplying nutrients, uh, such as amino acids and glucose, to the lens in the cornea, and it maintains the interocular pressure of the eye, which is normally between uh, 12 and 22 millimetres of mercury. So aqueous humour is produced in the ciliary body, which is the anterior portion of the uveal tract, which also contains the ciliary muscles which contract the lens. Uh, the humour is secreted into the posterior chamber of the eye from the pars plicata, which is the ciliary body's epithelium. From there it flows around the lens and drains through the pupil, filling the anterior chamber, and then exits the eye through the trabecular meshwork in the iridocorneal angle, so this is the angle between the iris and the cornea, into the canal of Schlem, and from there it enters the epistleral and aqueous veins and returns to the systemic circulation. So in closed angle glaucoma, the outflow of this aqueous humour through the iridocorneal angle becomes blocked. This can be due to forward displacement of the iris, for example. As the aqueous cannot drain away from the eye, it builds up and the intraocular pressure increases dramatically. So as I said, normally it's around 12 to 22 millimetres of mercury. But in closed angle glaucoma, it can rise to 60 millimetres of mercury or even more. Blockage of the iridocorneal angle can occur for a number of reasons. Once the angles are blocked, the aqueous humour cannot be drained within the canal of Schlem and beyond, and so it builds up, and it's that which leads to the increase in intraocular pressure. So primary closure is the most common reason for a closed angle, and these patients already have a predisposition to a closed angle glaucoma with an anatomically narrow angle, and closure occurs as a result of forces either pushing or pulling the iris. Patients with a predisposition include those who are severely hypermetropic, as far-sighted patients, those are the short axial lengths, so that's the length from the front to the back or anterior to posterior of the eye, those are the thick lens and those are the thin iris as well. So forces that pull the iris shut are called anterior forces and these include things like neovascularization of the cornea which causes traction and that's in case like diabetes and pulls the iris forward or inflammation in the case of uveitis can also bring the iris forward. Things that can push the iris shut happen from behind the iris so that's usually to do with the lens and classically this is either when the lens grows with age or when it's dislocated it can push the iris forward too and shut the angle. The most common cause of acute angle closure glaucoma occurs in an anatomically predisposed eye as a result of pupillary block when the pupil dilates. So just to quickly recap, closure of the angle is usually primary, which is an anatomically predisposed eye as a result of anterior posterior forces. You can also get secondary closure, this is due to blockage of the trabecular meshwork itself, so it could be by a blood clot for example, that is less common.
So if we stop for a minute and think about the epidemiology of closed angle glaucoma, so there are four cases for every thousand of the population in those over the age of 40 years old, uh, though it's more common in the 60 to 70 year old gap. There's a four to one risk uh, for being female over being male, so females are four times more likely than males to have the condition. There's also an increased risk in those of the first degree relative with the condition. This is because eye shape is often inherited, and it's not unreasonable in those with a family member who has closed angle glaucoma to screen their first degree relatives, and if they are found to have a shallow angle too, to offer them prophylactic surgery to prevent them from getting the condition as well. So how does acute closed angle glaucoma present? Classically, the patient's gonna to come to you with severe eye pain. This is described as a boring type of eye pain uh, involving the eye and often spreading around the orbits around it as well, and occasionally with a headache, so a frontal headache or a generalized headache. As well as this, they're gonna have blurred vision, and this can rapidly progress to visual loss, as we said earlier. And alongside this, there's going to be halos. Uh, when they look at lights, there'll be a halo around it, sort of a glare. This is because the raised inter intraocular pressure interferes with the sodium-potassium ATPase pumps on the cornea, leading to a buildup of fluid and corneal edema, and that impairs the refraction of light through the cornea, leading to this glare. The pain is often so severe that it's accompanied by nausea and vomiting. And on examination, you have the ciliary flush, which is a red injection around the peripheries of the cornea, so around the iris, uh, from the blood vessels, along with a hazy cornea, again from the edema that we mentioned, and either a non-reactive or a minimally reactive pupil, which is often mid-dilated. If you were to touch the eye itself, it would be hard to the touch and feel a bit like a golf ball. So if someone comes to us with that sort of history, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to refer them immediately to ophthalmology. Obviously, this is a sight-threatening condition. They need to be seen as soon as possible. And the ophthalmologist is going to do a slit lamp exam. And what they'll see, they'll see a shallow anterior chamber when they look at it. They'll also have this corneal edema present as well, so they'll be able to see that too. And they'll do something called tonometry, which is a technique used to measure the intraocular pressure of the eye. And that's obviously going to be raised, so more than 22 millimetres of mercury. And it can be way, way higher than that, up to 60 or more. And the... Diagnosis of acute angle closure glaucoma is made by gonioscopy. This is a technique where you use something called a gonioscope, which is a lot of mirrors which look uh, through the slip lamp, you look through it, and that can examine the iridocorneal angle. And obviously these are going to be shut in acute angle closure glaucoma. And a closed angle is pathognomic of this condition. Sometimes the corneal edema is there, obviously, and makes gonioscopy really difficult. It's hard to see anything on there. And in these cases, it is reasonable to make the diagnosis based on a raised intraocular pressure uh, with the signs and symptoms we mentioned before, in particular, uh, non-reactive pupil. So now we've diagnosed this patient with acute angle closure glaucoma. How are we going to manage it? Well, as I said, we're going to send them immediately to ophthalmology. And the aim of the treatment is going to be to lower their intraocular pressure. We're going to throw everything we can at it to try and get this intraocular pressure down to reduce the damage to the optic nerve. So first of all, we're going to get all the eye drops, the topical medications we've got. So we're going to use things like Timolol, which is a beta blocker. We use apriclonidine, which is a sympathomimetic. Prednisolone, obviously, is a steroid eye drop. And pilocarpine as well. Then we're going to get our IV medications. So we've got acetazolamide, which is a carbonic anhydrase inhibitor. And if that doesn't work too well, we can use mannitol as well. And that's actually that's a very, very good treatment. Uh, once, we've got, once we've got the intraocular pressure down, so what we're looking for is the corneal edema. So once we can see the iris clearly through the corneal edema, then it's okay to go to surgery, because obviously you want to be able to have a good view of what you're operating on. So once we can do that, we're going to take them to theatre. And we're going to do something called a peripheral iridotomy, which is making a hole in the iris so that it improves the drainage of the aqueous humour. And we can do that either with a laser, so an ND YAG laser, or you can do it surgically. And this is going to be there. You'll be able to see it in patients. We've got a picture of it here. You can see the hole in the iris. And that just makes it easier for the uh, aqueous humour to drain through and restore the intraocular pressure to a normal level. Okay, so that's it. We've treated our patient with acute angle closure glaucoma. So just to summarise quickly. So the condition is an emergency and it's caused by the blockage of the aqueous humour's outflow. This goes on to produce a load of symptoms such as severe eye pain, Reduce visual acuity, halos around lights. It's the classic exam it's, uh, question. You also get a ciliary flush around the iris, a non-reactive scruple, and obviously a raised intraocular pressure. 
needs an immediate, immediate referral to lower the intraocular pressure, initially with medications, and then once that's low enough, they're going to do some surgery with either a laser or the surgical options. Just to say, this does have an excellent prognosis if it's treated promptly. So if you manage to get it in time and the patient doesn't have a complicated surgery, they've got an excellent prognosis and they're going to probably restore, go back to their normal level of vision. And as I said, uh, if you have a first degree relative with it, it's not unreasonable to consider a prophylactic iridotomy if they also have uh, shallow anterior chambers. Okay, so thanks very much. That's my teach on acute angle closure glaucoma. Thanks for watching and looking forward to having you on the next one.